During this time, uh, we mourn the loss of Beis Hamidrash and we yearn for the Geula Hashelema, for Mashiach Tzidkenu. Many wonder, and many are bothered. Can we really be redeemed? Individuals look at themselves and ask, will I be able to be redeemed? Will I see Mashiach? It says that in Mitzrayim, only one-fifth of the nation were redeemed. The rest died. It says that in the Geula Acheroina, soon, speedily in our days, also a very small percentage will be Zoichet to see. For name Mashiach, they'll be Zoichet to be redeemed. In other words, only those who want to be redeemed. But how do we know about ourselves? Do I really want to be redeemed or I just want to want to be redeemed? Some say that not everybody will have a resurrection. There are all kinds of sins recorded in the Gemara that one who are, ones who are involved in them lose their share to the world to come. So how will I know? Will I be zoichet to see Mashiach Tzidkenu? We sin. There's all kinds of nisyonis. We don't do everything right and everybody knows what he did wrong. He is a virus. How can we wait for Mashiach? And what do we really need to do to know that we're ready for Mashiach in every minute? So today we share some fundamentals in Ashkafa, in Musa. First, we must know there is no limit to the mercy of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And the most compassionate father in this world over his sons, that compassion doesn't even come close to the compassion and the love HaKadosh Baruch Hu has to anyone in Klali Sol, even what we call a simple Jew. And as long as the Galus keeps extending. That just demonstrates that. That is just because the Kodesh Baruch is so merciful. He has Rachmanos and simple people because he wants to include them in the Geula Ashlema as well because if a Kodesh Baruch wanted to redeem only the Tzadikim, Mashiach would have arrived a long time ago. But a Kodesh Baruch because he loves us so much, is waiting for more people to join. More people to purify themselves to be able to be Zoycher to the Geula. The Chofetz Chaim writes in Shmir Salosh on the Beis, Perikutes, that the claim of Klal Yisrael at the time of the spies was that, in fact, the Kodesh Baruch Hu promised us the land, but only if we will beat Tzadikim. And Yeshua and Kalev answered them, this is wrong. A Kodesh Baruch Hu doesn't say to a person, I'm only going to save you if you're going to be a Tzadik. No. A Kodesh Baruch Hu says, I won't save you if you will rebel against me. And that's why Yeshua and Kalev ended their words by saying, Ach Hashem al timroidu. Don't rebel against the Kodesh Baruch As long as one does not rebel against the Kodesh Baruch to uproot his mitzvahs intentionally, he can expect all the good that the Kodesh Baruch has to bestow on him. It's true that at the time of Mitzrayim, only one-fifth of the nation came out. But those who were not zoichet to come out, rebel against the Kodesh Baruch because this was after the Kodesh Baruch sent Moshe Rabbeinu. And he showed them all kinds of open miracles. They already saw nine plagues placed on the Egyptians. They saw the hand of Hashem. They saw Moshe Rabbeinu. They saw he was the true Shaliyah of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. HaKadosh Baruch Hu rules over the Elyonim and Tachtonim, the upper and lower worlds. And after all that, they did not want to come out. They didn't want to be redeemed. That's why they weren't Zoichet to be redeemed. But that doesn't mean anything about us, about today. Somebody who's in Galus under the almost complete sovereignty of Yetzirah that tries to fool us all the time and to, gives us all kinds of wrong machshavas and we still didn't see open miracles that everything spiritual seems so difficult in our eyes we don't have that taste that they had of Kirvas Hashem, of closeness to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to a person like that in our generations we cannot have any claims can't say that he will not be Zoichet to be redeemed of course one should not do and cannot do any sins and to say, wow, what can I do? It's a very tough generation. And one needs to do tshuva if every so often he stumbles on doing the wrong thing. But as long as he doesn't rebel, chas shalom to say that he won't be zoichet to be redeemed. If one sinned, he must do tshuva. And to erect all kinds of fences to make sure this doesn't happen again. But as long as he does that, he does tshuva, he should not look back, continue going forward. The kings and the simple people mentioned in the Mishnah and Sarede that will not merit Oilam Abba and will not merit the resurrection. They lived the time of Beis Amidash Arisha, the first Beis Amidash. They saw Kodesh Baruch with their own eyes. And yet they sinned. 
And even about them, at the end the Gemara says, they will merit Tchiyas HaMesim and Oilam Abba. The punishments mentioned in the Torah are not punishments as a, coming from a revenging God. One in the Veya, I'll strike him. No, the opposite. The punishments come to purify and rectify the person. That even after he said, the Kodesh Baruch Hu still wants him to be purify himself and with that to merit the good which is stored for the Tzaddikim. As Rashi writes, Dvarim Chavtes, Pasuk Yud Beis, Rashi says, why is Atem Nitzavim Right after the Klaus, what's the connection between the two? The Klaus and Kisavu, because Gladys all heard so many curses, 98 of them, on top of the 49 that they heard in Pashas Bechukhoisai. They said, who will be able to withstand all this? And Moshe started appeasing them and said, look, you did many things wrong, and you angered the Kodesh Baruch Hu, and yet you see you're still around, you're still here. Just like the day that is still here, you still light up the world and you're still here. So to HaKadosh Baruch Hu will continue to light up the world for you. And the Klalos, the curses, the afflictions, they are the ones that enable you to stay here. In other words, the Tachlis, the purpose of the punishment and the affliction is only to purify a person in order to allow him to merit, to see and the coming of Mashiach. In order to merit to be one of those who, in fact, anticipate the coming of Mashiach, we should say every single day, the 13 Animamin, the principles of our faith, as the Rambam details, and with that, it puts in to one's heart anticipation, yearning, longing for Mashiach. Reb Chaim Vital Zatzal asked the Ariza, when we look at ourselves and we try to compare us to earlier, generations we are but nothing how is it possible that we should merit the geula when they didn't and the arizal told them you should know that the greatness of a person is not according to his deeds it's according to the time to the generation that he lives in because a small deed that one does in our generation said the arizal to Reb vital has the weight corresponding to great mitzvahs in previous generations because in these generations when it's so difficult, it's so much more difficult than earlier generations, every mitzvah shines so much more than their mitzvahs. And if the Arizal said this to Reb Chaim Vital more than 400 years ago, when there was still some light in the world, spiritual light, what will we say today when it's so dark outside? Chazal used a language, Yerida a deterioration of the generation today. We don't experience that anymore. We experience a free fall. It's just going downhill so now for sure every mitzvah has so much weight and every avaya one does now it's much smaller than in the past similar to this writes the yismach yisrael the end of parsha segev in the name of his father that reb chaim vital asked the ariza about what it says in the mishnah that the belazah ben azaria's cow used to go with a strap between its horns and shabbos according against what chacham said and yushalmi says that it wasn't his animal. It belonged to his neighbor. But because he didn't protest, it's counted as if it was his. And yet, because of this small thing, it wasn't really his. It's just that he didn't protest. He fasted so many times, like Gemara says, his teeth became black. Just imagine. The Balaza ben Azaya is walking in the street in Shabbos. He sees a cow with some kind of strap between its horns. But he doesn't really notice it because he's learning. He's in the Sugya. He's in the Gemara. But... After he's there, he walks away, somebody comes to him and says, you know, there was a cow here before that walked according to your opinion, but it's uh, against what Chacham said. Rebbe Lazar ben Azariah felt so bad, he fasted so many times, just because he didn't protest, that his teeth become black. If on a, such a tiny, small little sin, he fasted so many times, what can we do with our sins? And the Ariza answered the Prime Vital and he said to him, in these generations, one sigh, from a true, sincere heart is more dear to HaKadosh Baruch Hu than all the fasting and afflictions of the Rishonim because of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's concealment. And if he said that back then in his generation, the Arizal, what will we say now? Kal Vachomer, in the generation of the Arizal. And if the Yismach Yisrael made such a big Kal Vachomer back then, about 150 years ago, we can probably do a thousand Kal Vachomers for our generations. How much? One Sai of a yid is worth. So if we did something wrong, we have to fix it. But we need to anticipate the coming of Mashiach. 
חס ושלום, not to rebel against the Kodesh Baruch Hu, but to tell the Kodesh Baruch Hu, we really want to be redeemed. And Emetz Hashem, for that merit alone, we will.